quality control Captivates your party patrol Your mind, body, and soul bubble The bell tolls like the rhythm explode Big, bad, and bold be So, now we have case three where we have two distinct um, real um, eigenvalues again but these are both positive so that means zero is less than lambda one which is less than lambda two so now we have again the solution y t equals c1 e to the lambda 1 t v1 plus c2 e to the lambda 2 t v2 and as t approaches infinity um, we'll have <clears throat> this um, will go to they'll both go to infinity But this will go to um, this will go to infinity quicker. So that means solutions will become parallel. So this is the opposite of our other case. Solutions will become parallel to v two. And as we go to negative infinity, so as T approaches negative infinity, these will both go to zero. But this will go to zero quicker. That means all we're left with is the B1 component. So solutions come from um, or start out parallel to v1 and the way that looks when you graph it is this is our v1 right here and we extend that out to make this span of v1, all scalar multiples. And this is um, v2. And we extend that out to make all scalar multiples of v2. All solutions will go to infinity, so we have arrows pointing outwards from the origin. But since lambda 2 is greater, um, solutions will be parallel to v2 as we move out. And we'll start out parallel to v1. So the way that looks is you know, solutions like this. So we end up parallel to v2, start out parallel to v1. And this is called, um, this has four unstable half lines. So this is called a nodal source because everything is moving out from the center. So here, center is a source. So now we have um, case uh, four. And here we have complex eigenvalues. Um, actually, cases four through six are all complex eigenvalues. So with complex eigenvalues, um, we know our lambda one and two equal the trace plus or minus trace squared minus 4d square rooted. 
all over 2. And this is going to split up into a real and imaginary part. Um, we'll just call these real and imaginary parts alpha plus i or beta i. And um, our solution takes the form y of t equals c1 e to the alpha t cosine beta t v1 minus sine beta t v2 plus c2 e to the alpha t sine beta 1 or beta t v1 uh, plus cosine beta t v2. So now we look at case 4 specifically. And that's when alpha equals 0. So we have a pure imaginary eigenvalue. And that leaves our solution looking like this. y of t equals c1 cosine beta t v1 minus sine beta t v2 plus c2 sine beta t v1 plus cosine beta t v2. And as you can see, this is a periodic function. And uh, I guess I should make clear, v1 and v2 are the associated eigenvectors with a plus or minus bi. So since this is periodic, that means for our phase plane portrait, if we start somewhere after um, one period of time, we're going to have to end up back there. So these are actually going to look like this. Um, we know these are these are centered on the origin and they're skewed ellipses. Um, and we know they're centered on the origin because as c1 and c2 go to zero, um, we just get the degenerate case zero zero. <clears throat> and these circulate in a particular direction. Um, so these are skewed ellipses. And uh, if V1 is parallel to V2, then we get an ellipse. So not a skewed ellipse, but an actual ellipse. And this is called a center. So we determine the direction, whether it's clockwise or counter or clock counterclockwise. Um, by plugging in y equals 1, 0 into y prime equals a y. Um, so y prime will give us the tangent vector at the point 1, 0 when we plug in 1, 0. So the tangent vector is pointing up. So if y prime points up, then as you can see, we have a counterclockwise rotation. If y prime points down, then we have a clockwise rotation. So now for case um, 5, we look at what happens when alpha is greater than 0, so complex with a positive 
real part. And that'll give us what we had before. So if we call this z of t, this periodic part, um, what we'll get now is z of t again, this periodic part, multiplied by e to the alpha t. So since alpha is positive, um, our ellipse will be getting larger and larger as we go out. So this defines the skewed ellipse we had before. And this enlarges the radius of the ellipse. as t gets larger. So the way that looks is we start from 0 as t goes backwards in time. And we spiral out. So the radius gets larger and larger, but we're rotating. And we can have a few of these. And these all proceed outwards. So this is called a spiral source. And we find this direction. Uh, counterclockwise or clockwise by again plugging in and y equals 1 0 to y prime equals a y and then our last case case 6 um, we have the opposite so alpha less than 0 this is complex with a negative real part. And this just has the radius decreasing as time goes on. So it's the exact opposite of what we had before. So we start from infinity and we spiral to the center. So these go inwards as time goes on. And we find, and this is called a spiral sink equilibrium. And find direction the same way. <clears throat> same way as before. to take a trip back in time. Are you ready to get into your time machine? Okay, fasten your seatbelts. Are you ready?